Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, life coach and companion on this beautiful journey called life. First off, I am fighting spring allergies, so please don't worry. I just didn't feel the need to skip my episode with you today, for you today. And uh, second, I want to, yeah, express my gratitude to you. I was on a two-week vacation, road tripping through Canada, 3,300 kilometers. And um, yeah, I'm very happy to be back. I'm full of life, full of love, full of excitement, and I hope this will shine through in my work for you. Uh, it's been an incredible trip and I was happy to pre-record a couple of episodes for you before the trip and to um, have episodes um, with interviews as well. And I hope you got a lot of value out of them and enjoyed them, learned something new, or were able to keep an open mind and heart uh, whenever something was, yeah, triggering you. Um, I feel that's very important nowadays, that we know that people are very different, have very different views, and sometimes we don't agree with them, but we can still see the human in them, and maybe even be curious about their opinion and how their opinion was formed by their life experiences. My last episode for you was about your deathbed <laughs> and how you can live a life with, yeah, the least amount of regrets and how you can feel alive, make the right decisions so that you don't regret towards the end of your life. Of course, we never know when we're going to die. <clears throat> but if you happen to be leaving the planet like my grandfather did, this um, influenced my view on death quite a bit. Um, you will be, yeah, haunted by experiences that were not nice and pain inflicted onto others by you. And um, I just want to make sure that you live with awareness today, that you are aware of the steps that you're taking, that you know the consequences. And don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that you have to please people around you at all times it's quite the contrary, actually. Um, if you follow your call, if you go um, walk on your path, you might upset people. But the people who truly love you will always understand your actions because your actions will be driven by love, by expansion, by wanting to serve others. And then there will be people who are not okay with your decisions. But that's totally fine. That just means that they're not aligned with your values. But to get there, to make the decisions that are right for you, you have to get to know yourself first. You have to know what you're made of. You have to know which experiences have shaped your core values that you live by today. And sometimes we have to question the assumptions that we made about ourselves or others or our core values. It is very important to keep yourself in check and to know that we change, we adapt to certain circumstances and situations but sometimes the adaptation is outdated right if you have been in an 
abusive relationship. You had to come up with ideas, with values, with coping mechanisms that supported your survival. Now that you're not in that relationship anymore, now that you're, you know, out and about again, maybe, <clears throat> you need to reevaluate your relationship values. You're not in survival mode anymore. You don't need to protect yourself anymore. You can be open again. But some people forget about this. They just keep living a life in survival mode and bring this attitude, this way of living into their new relationship and then wonder why they keep having the same shitty outcome. And it is not the other person's fault. It is always easy to point at the other person that is now your new partner and to blame them. It is you who made the choice to be with that person and to relate to this person in the way that you did. And this is why I'm here. This is why I'm constantly reminding you that you need to be aware of your coping me mechanisms, of your protective shield, of the walls that you have built around your heart and yourself while you were in pain. <clears throat> and be self-aware. I was going to say critical with yourself, but sometimes people overdo it and become too judgmental with themselves. And that's not, not good either. But become more self-aware. Another thing that I want to talk about today is that when I talk about making the right choices the right decisions for yourself, we might think that I'm talking about the big decisions, <laughs> you know, like to buy a house, to uh, propose to a partner, um, to move to a new country, uh, to buy a car, uh, to decide that you want to have kids. But what I want to emphasize is that it is the little decisions that you make on a daily basis, if not hourly basis, that deeply influence your life. And most people are not aware of it. It is the attitude that you wake up with in the morning, the first couple of thoughts that shoot through your brain when you wake up. It is the way you get dressed. It's the way you have breakfast. It is the way you consume news or information, right? We're not only consuming food and the food becomes our blood, our cells, our organs, our skin. It is also the information that we consume on a daily, if not on an hourly basis, that will form the way we think, the way we feel about the world. And those are the decisions that you make each day, each hour of your life that will deeply influence your bigger decisions, the way you feel about life and others. So I also want to make you aware of this. How do you wake up in the morning? Do you feel rushed? Do you feel drained? Do you feel annoyed by your alarm clock? Can we change this? Can you make... Can we make you enjoy getting up in the morning? Are you getting up for somebody else, something else? Or are you getting up for a nice little ritual, a hobby that you started engaging in? Are you getting up for yourself? How do you eat? Do you eat in the morning? Some people don't even eat in the morning. They skip. Some people are just not hungry. Some people are intentionally engaging in intermittent fasting or full-on fasting. But how aware are you of the things that you put into your body first thing in the morning? Is it water? Is it coffee? Is it tea? Do you smoke first thing in the morning? 
And then we go on to social media or your phone in general. Some people go to the bathroom first thing in the morning with their phone. So they start consuming with their mind already. How aware are you of the stuff that you're consuming? How does it make you feel? Do you learn? Do you expand? Um, or are you judgmental and jealous of what you see? <clears throat> Next thing then is interactions with people. How do you interact with people? Are the interactions that you have with people positive, mainly, overall, be it the grocery clerk, be it the waitress, be it your neighbor, be it the person that you take a bus ride, like share a bus ride with uh, each morning, Uh, do you make eye contact? Do you look away? Do you speak to people or are you more of an observer? And then your relationships. How good are the relationships in your life? I want to say that life is relationships. The way we relate to our environment heavily influences our physical health But a lot of it is also influencing our mental health. How stable are your relationships? Do you interact with your friends and family, with your partner on a daily basis? If yes, are these interactions positive or are they draining? Do you decide to resolve conflict or how do you manage difficult situations with people? All this influences how you see yourself and the world in general and I cannot emphasize how important it is to of course not overanalyze yourself but maybe once a week check in with yourself and see hey what are the actions I'm taking like go into birds perspective and watch yourself for a day How do you show up? How do you show up for yourself? How do you show up for your um, work? How do you show up for other people? How do you show up for strangers? How do you show up for your pets? Yeah, I think I think I got everything out that I needed to get out for you today. It is really important to Be aware of how your body feels. Do you breathe? <laughs> What a question, right? Because of course you're breathing, otherwise you'd be dead. But don't underestimate the importance of breath. People who have a very shallow breath, for instance, a very shallow exhale, a very short exhale, tend to hold on to things in life. They can't really let go and accept their reality today. They're still trying to hold things together, to hold on to the past that might have been painful. If you know this about yourself, you need to go deeper. You need to exhale more. You need to let go more, accept more. What about your inhale? Are you okay with your current situation or are you trying to, you know, uh, push through, avoid, resist? Then your breath might be very short and that's also not good. Your breath deeply influences how you feel about yourself, your mental health, but also heavily your physical health. It is through six proper deep breaths that you can influence your heart rate your blood pressure isn't that amazing of course if you are <clears throat> dealing with um, blood pressure and heart issues you have to consult a doctor and get medication I'm not a doctor I'm not giving you medical advice here But I know for a fact that if you start breathing properly, if you inhale fully 
Exhale fully and let go. If you notice the beginning, the mid part and the ending of your breath, you can be on a very good path to better health, also mental health. So watch yourself. Pick a day of this week and watch yourself. What are the actions that you take? And by observing yourself already, you will change automatically, right? It's just like when you work at, a, at an office and from one day to the other, your boss tells you, hey, um, <clears throat> we're going to put up a camera now because we want to watch you closely. Your behavior, behavior will be changing if you want it or not. Same goes for observing yourself. You don't have to think about major changes that you need to make if you notice something is, you know, a little bit off or something that you don't really like about yourself. Noticing already, I want to say, is way more than 50%. It's 80%. And from there, you can naturally, organically, sustainably approach a change, not radically. The radical never really works. Maybe for a week, but then it's too much for your nervous system. Your nervous system is what I want to talk about next on Thursday, because sometimes we want to make changes so radically, so fast, but our nervous system is not really ready to adapt to this change already. And how can we ready ourselves to make the changes that are right for us. Um, I'm really passionate to talk about this with you. Um, as always, please give me feedback, um, leave me a review. You don't know how much it means to, yeah, just leave me a rating or a review. This helps people to find my podcast and uh, I want to make sure that I help as many people as possible on this journey and uh, yeah you have a heavy say in how successful my work is being transpired into the world thank you so much for being there i deeply appreciate you and i will be out there on thursday for you bye bye